Okay guys, so I have February's morning basket and bookshelf here. I purposely waited until Valentine's Day was over because we had just so, mon so many Valentine's Day books and I didn't want to make the entire month of February about Valentine's Day. So we only really did that the week of Valentine's Day. Anyway, this is what we've got in here for the remainder of February, and then I will show you our bookshelf and our unit studies as well. So you're gonna see a lot of the same stuff maybe that you saw um, a couple of months ago, but we'll see. We, I of course have my planner here. I am planning, I'm planning. I am filming a plan with me video just so you can see a breakdown of exactly how I plan while I'm planning instead of just me telling you how I plan. So I'm looking forward to sharing that video with you either this week or next week. They have their clipboards in here, same things as always, their chore charts, their handwriting pages, their map, etc. We are back to using these Usborne activity books. This is the one that my son was using, I believe, in November or December. These are the this is the Knights and Castles activity book. He loves this. As he becomes a better reader, he is enjoying this even more because he can do some of the activities now without my instructions. So I'm very pleased to see him completing more than one page each morning. And again, in case this is the first morning basket video that you're watching, they grab their clipboards and do their chores first thing in the morning. And then when we sit down to our morning basket, they do an activity book while they wait for everybody else to complete their chores. So basically, if you're the first or second one to complete your chores, you get more time with your activity book than the others. It's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles. But they sit here just so that they're sitting and prepared for school to begin with their activity book. So my son, my six-year-old, is using this Knights and Castles activity book. This is by Usborne. Um, my four-year-old is doing this My First Maze book, and I'm just going to show you inside because he's able to complete these on his own, and he's very proud of himself, so he doesn't need my help, and that is a big deal for him because he knows that his brother and sister don't need much help, so I love that this is super age-appropriate for him. As you can see, he did this one this morning. Okay, yeah, he did that on, he did it right. I was like, what if I show it on video and he didn't actually complete it? Yes, he did that correctly. And then my daughter is actually wrapping this up. This is her cre Create Your Own Pizzeria book. This is also by S. Born. Um, and the next one that she's going to be doing is the Create Your Own Boutique. This one is so, so cute because it's more than just writing in the book. She's like, see, these are all the just different pizza toppings that she can cut out while she's making her menu. I know the other day, yeah, she did a um, table setting for her restaurant. So this is really fun for her. She only completes one of these per day just because there's cutting and pasting and gluing involved. So she's working on that. And then these easier reads for my four-year-old in case he gets bored while we're doing school. We kind of break up our morning basket a little bit with a book for him. So in here for the next couple of weeks, we have Mix It Up. I'll put the link to this below. My kids love the Press Here series. Right now, they're really liking Mix It Up, so there's that. Alphabet City is a really fun one because you can either go, you know, there's no words. You can, well, there's words on that page. There are no words on the pages. They're just images. But it's kind of fun to just flip to a random page and have your kids guess what letter that is. So, for example... This one is the letter P, so I don't know if they would see that right off the bat, so it takes them a little while to look and figure it out. So that's a fun one for everyone. We do have a couple of um, Valentine's books still, so we have two special Valentines and Valentine Express that we haven't finished yet. We got so many Valentine's books from the library. Here's this one again. This was in my last month video I showed this. We are still really loving this on the mornings that we do it. I added the Rhyme Bible in instead of a devotional while we transitioned to my husband's new work schedule because we are not currently doing a morning devotional because he's leaving a little bit early, <clears throat> earlier. Excuse me. So we're just doing a little bit of the Rhyme Bible when we sit down together a couple of mornings. We have our hymn books, which I've created. I think I've shared um, in the past how we do our hymn study. 
my handwriting teacher's guide. We are still loving the children's book of virtues. And then here is my picture smart Bible teacher's guide. And then Hungry Planet and Material World are still back here for geography. We're on Farmer Boy right now for our afternoon tea time. And we are still just barely doing Story of the World, the Middle Ages. I shared this last month and then I put a disclaimer. There is some information on um, uh, like evolution in here. It's easy enough for me to skip over with the kids, but I wanted to make sure that I said it in the video because in the last video, when I filmed it, I wasn't aware of that because we had not started reading it yet. So just be aware that if you choose to not um, do that in your homeschool, it's easy to skip over. And then this, this is a new book as well. I've peeked through it. It's actually for, it's weekly discussions, but I don't know if I'm gonna just do it once a week. This is called The Fairyland of Science and it's just written from the perspective of the small, small fairies from what I hear, from the description that I read. So I'm excited to kind of balance between these two on the mornings that we read our science and nature study. I thought that they might be similar in the sense, obviously this is written for children, but I thought it might be similar because it kind of focuses on the smaller microscopic parts of science. So I thought that would be great to add in. And then I believe that this is going to be the last month that we are using our blue ribbons. My kids have kind of become bored with them or I have become bored with them and I just ordered some gumballs. I think that we might just switch it up and add gumballs to our homeschool basket um, for really, really outstanding work. So we'll see. But for right now, we still do have the blue ribbons and the speeding tickets in here, which I'll put a link if you're interested in that. And now I will show you our February bookshelf. Okay, so here is our February bookshelf. And just like last month, each shelf kind of has a different meaning to me. My kids don't follow that. Um, they just see a bunch of books, which is the whole point. But keeping it a little bit organized helps me know what to put in here and what to put out on our playroom bookshelf. So the shelf up here, these are the books that my kids are rotating through more consistently, the ones that they're gravitating toward and this I try to change out as they change out their interests. So so my six-year-old loves Berenstein Bears books so this is um, the one that he keeps grabbing lately so he's got this one out here on the bookshelf. Um, my four-year-old loves this All Better book. This one's super cute. These stickers are reusable and if they get um, dull you can just rinse them and then they work again. They're not they're not necessarily like Plastic. I'm not exactly sure what material they are. It's hard to explain because it's not like gooey sticky, but anyway, they all the band-aids go sit here at the beginning of the story and then as you're reading through you have to um, clean it, kiss it, and put a band-aid on it and then they just come back to the beginning page here and stick the band-aid on. So this one's been really fun for him. Six-year-old loves these lift the flat books. They're like big kid lift the flat books. So this one's all about explorers. Same thing here. This one is how things work. And this one is really cool. So for example, this shows you how um, all the pipes work in a house. So it's a really great book. So he is gravitating toward these books right now. This is funny. So um, I'll give you more info at the end of the video here for those of you who are interested, but I don't want to bore anybody who's not. Um, but I did just join Usborn, and um, this was on my wish list, and I was even communicating with some of the girls in my party and saying, oh yeah, I really want this for my son. And then when I was going through my bookshelf, I was like, wait, somebody got this room for Christmas. So it's kind of funny. This is like very, very new to us, even though it's been in the house for a couple of months. I totally forgot. It came in, in the chaos. So this is one of those shine a light books, which they put the light behind the page and it shows through. Um, I'll show you at the end if you're interested in Usborne books, but so there's that book for my four-year-old. These are great books for bedtime because they can take flashlights in their room and the lights are dark and it's just perfect. These are the two books that my daughter, she just finished reading this one actually for the second time and she is now doing Heidi on her personal time. And that's that for that top bookshelf. So let me put these books back. 
This second bookshelf I try to make themed, well I've tried this time to make themed to our science curriculum. So we are doing the um, swimming creatures from Apologia. So this time around we've got this coral reef hide and seek book in here which my four year old loves. This one's really fun. It's got just little hiding animals in here. And then some of them are like little peekaboo pages. Oh yeah, there's that, see. So we're loving this one. Here's another Shine a Light book. We've had this one around for a while now. Um, it is The Secrets of the Seashore. So basically they shine a light on this page and it shines through to the front page here. So something's in waving in the water, which plants live in the sea. And when they shine the light, they'll see it come through. This book, the Sharks book, is a good... The chapter we're on right now is the... Um, a dinosaur fish, the prehistoric fish, but next chapter will be on sharks, so I let I went ahead and pulled this one out for this week to give them some excitement for next week. Um, this came in a sharks digging kit, and again, it was us born, but it's just by coincidence that it's out right now. So this is just a picture book um, with some information, and they have been loving this. It's actually, um, I had to borrow it back from them to make this video. And then I've got some fun dinosaur theme books. So I've got this Oh Say Can You Dinosaur by, um, well, it's part of the Dr. Seuss, the Cat and Hat Learning Library, but it's not by Dr. Seuss. There's that. And then a couple more dinosaur themed books for my readers. So the Magic Treehouse, Dinosaurs Before Dark, and Dino Thesaurus, which is, this one is like poetry and rhymes. So I think we're going to use this in tea time this week. Okay, this shelf is about to be filled, but this is for our unit study. So for the remainder of the month, we are doing Owl Moon. I never got around to it in January, and I rented or put placed a bunch of owl books on hold at our library, which I'm picking up tomorrow. So the rest of those books will be in here, but um, Owl Moon is our preschool read aloud for the next couple of weeks. And then down here, these are all books for Little Miss Annabeth to be read to, the kids to, can practice their reading with them, um, etc. So we have got I Love You Little One here. And this one's so, so cute. And then God Gave Us Love. This one's still hanging around from Valentine's Day. Oh, let go of that, buddy. Let go of that. This little Melissa and Doug book, um, the little girl's gone missing. She's somewhere in the house. Um, but this is a What Should I Wear? And you just go through the book and you can stick her in different outfits for different occasions. We have All Things Bright and Beautiful. This is one of our favorite, favorite books. And I was consistently checking this out from our library. So then I found a used copy on like eBay, but Goodwill. E eBay, Goodwill. So it's really, really great. Oh, you're going to show them your little toy? Yeah. Let me see. What's his name? Trunks. Trunks? Awesome. All right, here you go. You Thanks didn't show behind. Oh, I didn't show them his behind. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. So it's got, um, you know, all the words to all things bright and beautiful, but the illustrations are so beautiful. So um, it's perfect for the baby. And then this one's back in here, the baby's very first finger trail playbook garden. And basically there's just little, I have to set her finger in there because she doesn't know where to touch, but it's just like little textures for them to feel while you're reading them, the, the little words. So. Oh, there's one more in here. She is turning 11 months in a couple of days here. And I think that we are going to have a guess how much I love you birthday party. Um, so we've got this one in here again, but with that, do you hear her screaming? I'm going to have to go for now. So <laughs> I'll be back in just a little bit if you want some information on the Usborn. Okay, so if you stuck around here to hear about Usborn, which I'm sure you're already familiar with, but I just wanted to share a little bit of information here. The, I've showed a few books here that were Usborn. Now these just happen to be hanging around. These are not I didn't pull the Usborn books out specifically for this. We have so many. And I, even as I was going through our bookshelves, before I really became interested in Usborn, we were gifted a lot of Usborn books and Kane Miller books that I had no idea um, came from the company. So I found so many on a bookshelf. Woo! But these are the ones that um, that happen to be in our, in our bookshelf right now that are Usborn. So I'll show you. We've got this one, 
this one, this one, The Secrets of the Seashore. Um, let's see what else is us for in here. This Finger Trail Playbook, this All Better Book, and then the workbooks that I showed you, which I think the workbooks might even be my favorite part of the company, um, my favorite product that they make. These were all us born. Now, I'm going to show you real quick the, um, let me use my phone as a flashlight. These are best to use um, like a yellow light flashlight, especially if you're using it at bedtime because it keeps things calm. So example, people will live in this skyscraper when it's finished, can you see the plans? And then they shine it behind there. And do you see how it's got the plans back there? Or um, people watch as the area is cleared. What is this truck taking away? Let me shine that behind there. So even if you have kids who can't read yet, these books are really great because they can do something fun with the book while you're reading or while a sibling is reading to them. So right now, because I just joined, and I promise you, I'm, and I said this on Instagram, oh and I said this on Facebook, I'm not gonna spam you guys with, with us born constantly, but I did not announce it on YouTube, so I'm wanting to take this opportunity to do that now. Um, for my next couple of months here, if you book a party with me, you get double the hostess reward. So I'll put a link below to um, my reading group if you want to be a part of my reading Facebook group and to the incentives that you get as a hostess if you decide that you want to host a party with me. Literally, you get double the amount of free books. And it costs you nothing to host an online Facebook party. It's only 30 minutes of um, interaction that we have the day of the party and you just invite your friends on Facebook and um, based on the amount of sales you have, you get the free books. So I had a party back in November and um, I ended up getting, and I know I shared in my, I know I shared in my, what I got my kids for Christmas, all of the books that I got, all of those books were free and then some more. I got some more for my nieces and nephews, and I believe I ended up with almost $300 in free books, and that was before I even had like the double hostess rewards. Um, I didn't have that available to me because my consultant was not in her incentive period. So um, it's great. There's tons of great, great rewards for hostesses and for people who participate in the party to get free shipping or to get free books. So if you're interested in booking a party with me or in joining my Facebook reading group, the information for that is below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoy sharing my bookshelf with you as long as I'm, as well as my morning basket. So I think I'm just going to continue to bridge the two. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite books are, your kids' favorite books are right now in the month of February. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.